Hello, Slicey Dicers. This is Brian with another rapid fire review session for you. Pew, pew. Yep, I make gun noises and point my fingers now. That's a thing. Uh, that's it's probably going to stick, but we'll see. Uh, so, yeah, here we go. This is I do these every now and then. It's kind of fun just to get some knives reviewed and get them out of the way because I'm backed up. I got really backed up this past week because I had a, a vehicular emergency that required me to get a new vehicle. So that takes up a lot of time. So I'm just trying to catch up on some stuff. Some of the stuff I've had for quite a while and just have been completely remiss and not reviewed. Some of it is brand new. Some of it's been out for a while. One of them came back in stock briefly and it's gone again now, but they'll be back again. So uh, let's get going with this. Left to right, we're going to have the Real Steel Lynx, the Best Tech Arita, the Best Tech Casta, the Concept Spirit, and the Warhawk uh, version of the Boker Kalashnikov that you can get from Blade HQ. So let's get going. Uh, left to right, as I said, we'll start out with the Real Steel Links. And if you want to skip to the knife that you care about down below, I will have a little, uh, you know, time stampy thing for that. The Lynx, $235, not inexpensive for a Best Tech, but it is very, very, very nicely finished. I do have to say really nicely contoured carbon and very pretty carbon. This is basically a frame lock with some carbon overlays. It's, you could call it a liner lock, but I mean, look at the thickness of that. It's just a frame lock. If these scales weren't on here, this knife would still function perfectly fine. Um, S35 VN steel. Really nice looking design. I think I, I think it's very attractive, and you have a nice deep carry pocket clip that is reversible. It does it does have a glass breaker on it. I'm not in love with glass breakers on knives. I, I don't think they're really particularly useful, but that's kind of the only flaw I have with it design wise. I love the look at the backspacer. It's just a really really nice knife, and ergonomically also, it's just extremely comfortable in the hand. Jimping is put in just the right spot with just the right amount of aggressiveness. You don't feel that pocket clip a bit. Ergos on this thing are just freaking outstanding. That's the one thing that sticks out to me on this one the most that I just really like. It's just just great freaking ergos. And it's also a pretty darn good blade. Uh, blade stock on it, we'll do stats in just a moment. Blade stock is, is a bit thick at 0 0.14. And like not thick, thick, but a bit thick. But it's only 18 thousandths behind the edge. Very screaming sharp edge out of the box. It just It's an excellent cutter and also an excellent piercer too. You look at that great slicer great piercer I have very few complaints about this knife honestly let's do some stats and then i'll do a little summary here so you have a blade length of three and a half inches overall length of 8.4 inches you have a blade thickness as i said of 0.14 inches handle thickness bit thick at 0.62 inches and a weight of 3.7 ounces so just a bit over that ounce per inch kind of thing that everybody looks for but not too bad it also carries pretty well. Like I said, nice deep carry clip. We have Yeo Levi's here to do this a bit different, a bit off camera because I have a lot of knives laid out, uh, but not too bad. Flipper tab sticks out a little bit when you put it your hand in the pocket, but not not bad at all. And when you're going in, there's no jimping catching you. It catches you a little bit on the way out, but uh, it's it's not too bad at all. Uh, but yeah, very discreet little clip. Again, that glass breaker sticking up. That annoys me when it's in my pocket. That's most of the reason why I don't like glass breakers. But um, pretty darn cool knife. If I have one complaint about it, the detent is a little stiff. Uh, it definitely takes a little eh to, you know, get it going. I think I could probably, you know, bend the lock bar a little bit and back it off a bit if I wanted to. But it's not too bad at all. Uh, I really, really do. The same designer that did the Rokot, which I love that knife. I'm not going to attempt to butcher his name this time. But uh, yeah, really neat. A unique pivot too. I like the look of that pivot. You have to use a screwdriver, but it works uh, completely fine. Um, yeah, T6 screws, meh, yeah, it, but it still happens. I don't get too wound up about them, but I definitely do wish uh, that they were T8s. So that is that knife. Next, we're going to move on to the Best Tech Arita. Pretty flashy looking knife, I do have to say. And a big one. We'll do the stats on this one first because they are uh, impressive, <laughs> I guess this is the way to say it. Blade length of 3.9 inches, overall length of 8.75 inches. Blade thickness of 0.15 inches. It looks a lot thinner in this view, but when you go down here, 
at 0.15, uh, handle thickness of 0.65, uh, pretty thick, and uh, a weight of 4.5 ounces. Uh, this is running on bearings, as was the real steel. Um, very, very good action, as you'd expect from a best tech. Really thick liners. Again, it's kind of a theme going here. Um, yes, it is technically a liner lock, but that they are, those are very, very thick, thick liners for sure. This is the carbon fiber version. They come in several other kind of G10 versions. You're looking at about $90 for one of these. 14C28 on steel, which I love that steel. It's one of my absolute favorites. Um, the, and the carbon fiber is very nice. I like I like the little pop of color on the you know pivot collar and on the pocket clip. It's a really good looking knife if you're into this style. Um, it's not my aesthetic choice, I guess. Uh, it's a bit, a bit too, I don't know future Persian warrior sort of style for me. I don't know how to describe it, uh, but it, the blade is pretty much all belly. Um, but ergonomically, it's excellent. I, I do like that it's got this little cutout here for your thumb, and then it also has a forward finger trail. And when you, even though it's a really big blade, when you want to get in and really do some stuff, it works extremely well. I do have to say that. Uh, kind of a compound grind going here just right up towards the tip. I don't know if it's even going to show up on camera. Yeah, I think you can kind of see it there. Um, again, pretty thin behind the edge. Not too bad. Also 18 thousandths. And with that blade thickness, it's not hugely thick. It slices pretty well. It's not, you know, like a cardboard slicing dream, but it's okay. The tip on it's pretty darn dainty, I will say. If there's one flaw with this thing for sure. That tip, you're not going to be wanting to do too much with that. You will break the tip off on it. But as long as you're gentle with it, as far as that goes, as far as stabbing into stuff, don't stab car doors. And it'll probably be fine. Um, again, carries it carries okay. Uh, the pocket clip is fine as far as the tension and stuff goes. I wish it had a little bit more ramp. I have had a couple of pairs of jeans that this was kind of hard to get in and out of. It's not hard in you know, Levi's. And once it's in there, the flipper tab is 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 it's pretty good actually it's not too bad i was thinking this was the one that had the prominent flipper tap it's probably the next one uh it wasn't that bad but very thick handle and you do definitely notice that really thick handle on this one um the weight on it you know not too bad four and a half ounces under that ounce per inch um i think the g10 ones might be a, a shade more but i don't think by much but it is actual real genuine carbon and 90 bucks you know, not too bad. Action is excellent, as you'd expect from Best Tech. So, I have not torn this one apart or done anything with it. I'm sure if I did, it would be totally drop shutty, as it is now. I do have to do a little bit to it. You can spidey flick it, but it takes it takes some effort, but you can definitely do it. Uh, thumb flicking it is... Yeah, thumb, thumb flick is a little bit easier, but it's, uh, it's still not amazing. It's still... I mostly... It's, it's mostly a flipper. But... Uh, yeah, not a bad knife if you're into this aesthetic. I'm particularly not, so uh, it, it it didn't really blow my skirt up too much. But uh, I know a lot of people like this kind of flashy sort of aesthetic, and Best Tech does that very well. Which brings it to another one that also is kind of that flashy aesthetic. I like the look of this one a bit better, though. This is the Best Tech Casta. This is by far the most expensive knife here. You're looking at either 298 or 323 depending on the blade finish. This is the satin finish. This is the $323 one. There is a stone wash as well. And you can also get it in a gray. This is the bronze. You can get it in plain titanium or in bronze with stone wash or satin. So this is the most expensive one. Um, it is. It does look It does look pretty cool, I will say. I do like the look of it better than the Arita, um, but it's still not completely my jam. But yeah, it's a, again, same thing though. Ergonomics are outstanding. They really are. And it's got, I don't know what the hell to call this blade. Some places call it a Warncliffe. Some places call it a Cleaver. I saw one place called it a Reverse Tanto. It's probably all of those, to be honest with you. But again, all belly. There's no flat on it. Um, but ergonomically, really good. That forward finger choil is not huge. It works perfectly fine for my fingers, but I do have fairly skinny fingers. So if, if you've got, you know, big old knee hooks, that might be an issue. But choking back it's still comfortable you can feel that pocket clip just a bit but it ain't too bad um but yeah it, it is not an inexpensive knife especially for a best tech but you are getting m390 steel titanium really nice carbon 
It's just that it says Best Tech on it. So y- y- people have to get used to the fact that Best Tech is uh, moving up in the world and making some fancier stuff. It's it definitely as far as fit and finish and uh, little details, you know, like look the, the pivot's really nice. You know, you're getting all really nice T8 screws, except for on the pocket clip. And um, it's M390, titanium, all that stuff. You just have to get used to the fact that it says Best Tech on it. But and look at that backspacer. That is pretty, absolutely for sure. Um, and again, it's just, are you into this aesthetic and are you willing to pay 300 or more for a Best Tech? I, I think it's definitely worth it, but you just have to decide that on your own. Stats on this are... Blade length of three and a half inches, overall length of eight and a quarter inches, uh, blade thickness 0.15 inches, and a weight of 4.8 ounces. And again, pretty thin behind the edge, about seven, about a 17 thousandths behind the edge. It does slice pretty darn well. 0.15 inch blade stock ain't thin, but it ain't thick either, and 17 thousandths, and this thing is all full flat grind. So it does slice really well, and it also it needs to be cleaned off. I assure you it's a much prettier knife than that but uh um yeah they did a good job with it for sure it's just is this your aesthetic and do you want to spend the money on it action is outstanding i've done nothing to this and yeah again you can use the deployment hole so that's always nice to have how does it carry this carries uh, yeah again kind of, okay um Pocket clip is actually pretty good. The ramp's all right, but it doesn't have that much clearance. So, like, even on the Yield Levi's, you got to give it a little shove to get it in there. There's just not, I'll pull it out here again and show you, but um, that's what she said. But um, it it slides in and out okay. Just it could stand to be to sit a bit more proud. Um, as far as getting your hand past it, uh, you can feel the 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 flipper tab a little bit, but the problem is really more it's it's just kind of tall. It's just kind of tall in the pocket, you know, by this dimension. And I think that pocket clip could be angled a little bit better to minimize that. <clears throat> but it's still not super hard to get your hand past or anything. But yeah, look at all that milling. The more I look at this, the more I am impressed with all the milling and stuff on it. it that's why I'm saying it's worth it. Definitely. You just have to get used to the fact that it says it says Best Tech on it instead of Wii or, you know zt or something like that and that's the kind of companies they're stepping into into battle with now coming out with something like this but pretty cool knife if you are into these kind of into this kind of this kind of look uh next up also kind of in that same sort of aesthetic we have the concept spirit uh this comes in in many 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 different versions this one has the thumb hole deployment which uh, i would probably recommend that one but it comes in with the hole or without the hole and in several different colors this they call green and in the pictures it looks really green but in person it's more of a grayish teal i guess is the best thing I, and it's actually coming out pretty true on the video sometimes they say the video is not accurate but i'm looking at the video as i'm looking at the knife that's pretty true um and we have a really nice titanium backspacer a titanium pot clip s35 vn 198 bucks for all the versions of it uh, this one is the uh, kind of black wash blade. Uh, I do like the look of this one a little better than those two best texts I showed. I'm not really sure why, uh, because it still has a lot of the same things. It still has a sort of unidentifiable blade shape, and um, and it's you know kind of swoopy, and it's got these scallops, and it's it is a very stylized knife. But I don't know. I just I just like the overall shape of this a little better than those two. Uh, it is right hand left hand carry as you can see some people really f- some people like complain because it's not left handed but they also complain when you can see screw holes on the other side that doesn't bother me a bit um and i do like the color a whole lot in the it, when i got it from concept uh they sent it to me i didn't specify what color i wanted and when i saw green i was like oh god because you guys know i'm not a green fan but when i took this out it's not really green so i was completely fine with it um, action on it is outstanding. S thirty five being steel, by the way, if I didn't mention that, and I just, I, I do, I do like this a lot. It feels very, very robust. Um, the blade thickness on it, I uh, will get to that. I have to do all the stats here in just a second. Uh, but the blade thickness, pretty thick, zero point one six. But the upshot to that is you do have a good place to land your finger. So let's do some stats. Uh, we have a 
blade length of three and a half inches, overall length of 8.25 inches. As I said, blade thickness of 0.16 inches. Handle thickness, pretty thin actually, 0.51 inches and a weight of 4.9 ounces. Now I will say thickness behind the edge of this 24 thousandths, not amazing, uh, but I've had a, a several concepts now. A lot of them you guys haven't even seen. They send me uh, almost all their prototypes and stuff as well. And their S35VN is pretty darn good. It's been holding up extremely well. Um, I've, I've often referred to uh, these as, as nicer Kaisers because this company was kind of born from Kaiser. Uh, it's, it's several former Kaiser employees. Pretty sure they're made in the same factory, but they just seem a little bit nicer. And I do really like that. I think Metal Complex called them Kaiser Plus, which is a, a very good way to describe them. That's uh, it's They're just a little bit nicer than... A, and Kaisers are fine. I wasn't ever like furious about the quality of Kaisers. So just something a little bit nicer is uh, is completely fine with me. But I this is not my favorite design they've made, but I, I do think it's pretty cool and I do see why people would like it. And I would actually get the green, even though it says green because it isn't green. I would actually... This is probably the configuration I would order because I do really like that deployment hole. I always like multiple deployment methods, always going to, always will, as I'm slipping my finger off from it. But I've had, I hung my headphones on my on my monopod. What was I thinking? I have even less elbow room than I normally do. Uh, but I do, do wish there were T8s on here. Uh, another little complaint for 198 bucks, you know, it's put T8s on stuff. All these knives are made in China and except for what that, that's Taiwan, I guess. But yeah, China, you have T8s at your disposal now. Uh, use those. Use use T8s. And lastly, this one is currently out of stock, but this is something that Blade HQ has been bringing back in stock regularly. I just reviewed the ridiculously huge uh, Kalashnikov XXL. I'll bring that out here in a moment. Uh, and a viewer was nice enough to buy me this. So uh, you guys know I like the Warhog aesthetic because I used to be in the in the twenty third Fighter Wing, which was the ancestral, you know, pass down of the Flying Tigers. So we had the Flying Tigers patches and all that. We were the only squadron allowed to have nose art, and it looked like this. And uh, I have several uh, other Warhog uh, themed things. Oh, right here is one of them. I've got you know the DLT exclusive you know Warhog little. Sat classic. I have a couple of Warhog uh, hinderers, um, and I and I and a Warhog hinderer pen. I got a lot of Warhog stuff, but uh, yeah, he bought me this. I think it's cool. I love Kalashnikovs. They're fun. This is only a forty-five dollar knife. Uh, it's Aus Eight steel, and I will say Boker's Aus Eight isn't the most amazing Aus Eight I've ever used. It's not horrible, but it's not you know like it's not like Cold Steel's Aus Eight, which is pretty unfair comparison because Cold Steel used to nail Aus 8 back when they were still using that like crazy. Cold Steel nails almost all their heat treats. Um, but you can see it's got the red pocket clip. This is definitely something I'm not going to carry very much. And it's got the dagger blade. I I don't care what the steel is on it because it's a painted blade and I'm not going to carry it because I don't want to scratch it up. But uh, it's just a really cool thing to have. 45 bucks in all all Kalashnikovs. This is the regular size Kalashnikov, so they're all about that price. They're all this snappy. They're all really cool. So even if you don't want this fancy pants one that is, uh, like it's not fancy pants, it's 45 bucks. This unique one, um, go check them out. They have a lot of really normal ones, and this was, uh, you know, this isn't even the craziest one they have by any stretch of the imagination. The Dessert Warrior is definitely the craziest one. It looks like a cupcake. And uh, which I think is, is pretty darn cool. But uh, these are great knives. Uh, aluminum handles. Uh, the stats on this, I'll just give you. And this will apply to mostly any um, any any of the basic size Kalashnikovs. You have a blade length of three and a quarter inches. Overall length of 7.6 inches. Blade thickness of 0.12 inches. Handle thickness of 0.67 inches. But that's at the nubbins. It's really more like 0.6. Uh, weight of 3.7 ounces. Uh Pretty thick behind the edge on this one. Um, I was looking at about 30,000, so it's, yeah, it's it's not great. And with that dagger, it ain't going to be an amazing slicer. Blade stock's pretty thin. It's relatively sharp out of the box, but uh, it's not really what these are about. And they have other blade shapes that are definitely thinner behind the edge and better slicers. But uh, this one is just all about the paint job, really. And a lot of it is paint, you know. Um, but 
yeah, it's uh, it's pretty neat, and I'm definitely glad to have it. But I did say, and I'll end the video on this because we're almost 20 minutes. Uh, so this is the XXL. <laughs> That thing makes me giggle every time. So this is the size difference between a regular Kalashnikov and an XXL. It is, uh, I think you would call it significant. Uh, it is quite a big difference, but I'm still loving this thing. This is D2 and and still like 60 bucks or 70 bucks, whatever they are. It, they're still available. Go buy one of these. These are so stupid. They are awesome. If you were allowed to have one, it's stupidity that you can't miss. Uh, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. And I know you guys really like the rapid fire reviews. So um, I'm happy to do them. Get some stuff off of my uh, to-do list. And I do really appreciate it. So if you guys have any more questions about these, I always try to be more active in the comments answering questions because they're short videos. So I uh, hope you guys have enjoyed this. So I've been Brian. Have a good one.